All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so once again, welcome to all of you uh, joining us. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Oh. That was not supposed to be happening. There we go. So welcome to today's webinar. I'm Tessa. Uh, you may know me from previous webinars or from other training sessions. If not, yeah, my name is Tessa. I'm onboarding specialist at Easy Generator. I just want to let you know that uh, this webinar is being recorded and you will receive the recording afterwards. Later this week, you'll receive it via email. Now, due to the amount of people joining, it's not possible to unmute yourself. Um, but if you do have any questions, please make use of the Q&A. Uh, the Q&A you'll find it's near the chat. And my colleague Jordan, who is also onboarding specialist, will answer them uh, throughout the session. So please feel free to add any of your questions there and uh, they will be answered. Um, let's see. So uh, that aside, let's get right into it. In today's webinar, I'm going to walk you through how to best transform your PowerPoints and or your PDFs into interactive e-learning courses using Easy Generator. So first of all, I'm going to address a little bit about what the benefits of e-learning are in comparison to both PowerPoint and PDF. Then I'm going to uh, discuss what to consider when you're making that switch from PowerPoint or PDF towards e-learning. Then I'm going to go towards the most important part, what are your options? Um, there are four options that I'm going to be explaining today. One of them is brand new. It's actually a, a new feature that we are soon launching in Easy Generator. So it'll be a bit of a sneak peek today to show you what's coming. And Last but not least, how to do it with an easy generator. I'm going to go through a live demonstration of uh, yeah, how you can actually um, uh, transform PowerPoints or PDFs into e-learning. Now, in the end, there will probably be a little bit of time for questions. Uh, so uh, I will ask Jordan to bring up any questions that uh, have stood out in the Q&A or have been asked several times. All right, so let's get started with the bigger picture. Uh, I first want to address what it actually means to move online. So if we zoom out for a second, typically when you're going from a face-to-face -face setting, uh, which is typically with PowerPoint, um, and you want to move towards the online environment, it can actually mean several different things. Uh, it can mean that you host an online version of your training, so virtually, like in Teams or in Zoom, kind of like what I'm doing right now in the form of a webinar, but it can, of course, be smaller scale. Secondly, it can also mean that you record your training. This is something that I know is quite popular. I mean, I'm doing it here as well. Um, and then you send that recording out to everyone who needs to learn. But the third option is that it can also mean that you'll make the training available for them to complete in their own time. And that's what we call asynchronous learning. This is where e-learning falls under. Now, the main difference here between these three options is that with the first two, when you provide a training or you provide a recording, they have to follow your pace. So you decide what topics to cover and how much time you spend on each one. And uh, you decide really the pace for the last option, when you create an e-learning course and you send it out to them, they decide their own pace. They decide which topics to cover or in which order, and they decide how long they spend on each topic. So they can basically learn what's relevant for them whenever it's relevant. That's the main difference. Now, in this session, I'm of course not saying that the previous two, so you know, live sessions or recorded trainings uh, are not effective. It really depends on a lot of things, right? The audience, practical matters. But today I'm really just focusing on creating asynchronous learning or training, which specifically is e-learning in our case. Now, there are many reasons to move towards e-learning, especially in comparison to PowerPoint or PDF. And those are the things I'd like to address next. So why would you go for e-learning versus PowerPoint? E-learning has many benefits that I would say PowerPoint does not. Um, um, the first one is time-saving and ease of maintenance. It's really 
easy to edit an e-learning and update it for everyone who needs to follow it. With PowerPoints that are either live or live presented or with recordings, it's much more difficult to update that content. Also, you may need to have to present it twice or three times, depending on time zones, absenteeism, or new hires that are joining. But also, PowerPoint doesn't always have an interactive experience. Uh, if it's recorded, it definitely doesn't. Right, so with e-learning, it's always an interactive experience because they are in lead of their own learning. They are the ones clicking next. They are the ones having to answer questions. Besides this, course accessibility is a big benefit as well. Um, uh, when you create an e-learning course, anyone with a stable internet connection and a device will be able to access your e-learning. It doesn't matter where they are in the world, doesn't matter um, if they join the company later or if they're on holiday, uh, they can always access it. Besides this, all of the learners are engaged. When they take an e-learning course, they have to go through it themselves. They don't just click play and sit back. They're actually engaged in the learning. Also, all learners receive acknowledgement because they all go through it. They're uh, also getting acknowledgement for completing it in the end, which isn't always the case in live trainings and definitely, once again, not the case with recordings. Last but not least, you get to gather information. You get to gather insights. With recordings, you may not know who's watched it. You may not know if they've actually paid attention. Sometimes it's a similar situation with live trainings as well. Just because they've attended doesn't mean they've really understood or listened. With e-learning, you get insights that will uh, tell you whether they've understood. Have they answered questions correctly? How many attempts have they had? And this is really useful information for you to take with you. Now, what's the situation with PDF? There are also some benefits of e-learning courses in comparison to PDF. One of them is that it can provide a more interactive experience. Now, I know that interactive PDF exists as well, but with e-learning, you can add questions that are interactive as well, asking them to put something in the correct order, asking them to type out uh, uh, an answer. Um, and this is an interactive experience that typically you don't have in, PowerPoint, in PDF. Sorry. Besides that, it also means that all learners are engaged. And once again, all learners receive acknowledgements. Also, you get to gather information and insights. These are the same benefits as with PowerPoint. And that's because these are the benefits of e-learning courses in general. But where does that leave PowerPoint and PDF? Um, uh, because it seems maybe that I'm speaking relatively negatively about them. Absolutely not. I love PowerPoint, I love PDF, um, but they're suited for specific things. PowerPoint is specifically suited for instructor-led uh, presentations. That's what PowerPoint was created for, and that's what it does best. PDF is specifically suited for sharing key information or takeaways. That's also what it does best. But neither PowerPoint nor PDF are suited for training an online and remote learner. It's not the ideal tool for training purposes when they are online and remote. So to put this into perspective, when you are going to take a PowerPoint or a PDF with content inside and you want to turn it into an e-learning course, remember that it's actually much more than just taking the content and placing it inside Easy Generator. You're going to need to make edits and changes and additions. When you want to create an e-learning course, above and beyond just the content that you have in PowerPoint or PDF, you need also to include interactivity. You need to ensure that the learners are engaged. You need to provide them with acknowledgement and feedback. And you can also gather information that can then help you further support them or further support their needs. If you don't do any of these things, it may lead to a negative experience. Now, I, we are now 250 of us here in this webinar. I think probably all of you have at least had one training that was fantastic, one training or maybe more that were not as great. 
So remember that with e-learning courses, it's a similar thing. You can have great e-learning courses and you can have not so great e-learning courses. So especially when you're transforming a PowerPoint or a PDF into e-learning courses, remember that it's still important uh, to ensure that the quality is high. And you do that by adding those elements of interactivity, which by the way, I'll show you how. So taking this into account, I'm now going to go through your options. So now we're reaching the more practical side of things. What are your options when you want to transform either PowerPoint or PDF into e-learning courses on Easy Generator? These are the four sort of options that you have. The first option is to, oops, is to start from scratch. Now, what this means is that you take your PDF or your PowerPoint and you have it in front of you and you start to brainstorm on, okay, how can I turn this into an e-learning course? How can I, you know, take some bits and pieces and inspiration from this content and turn it into an e-learning course that's great for online remote learners? This is kind of the ideal situation because you're probably going to create a really great e-learning course because you're creating it for the online and remote learner. It's not that you're changing something to make it suitable for the online remote learner. But as with most ideal situations, it takes a bit of time. So this option, although is great, it might take um, time that you actually don't have. If you do have it, please take this option, it's great. If you're not sure how to create a course from scratch, by the way, uh, then please uh, uh, feel free to send me over an email and I can invite you to a, uh, to a training, a basic training onboarding on how to use the tool from A to Z. The next option is a quick alternative. Actually, all three next options are quick alternatives. So the first one that you see, which is now the second one, is to embed your entire deck or PDF. This basically means you take your PowerPoint or your PDF and you just add it into one page. You do this through the documents option, which I'll show you exactly how it works in a second. For this option, it's basically the quickest option. You upload it and it's in there. It's in one page. Then, of course, you can add elements of interactivity. You can add, for instance, a learning objective. You can add questions before and or after the uh, PowerPoint deck or the PDF. So you can make it more interactive afterwards. The main benefit of this one, or maybe two, the first one is it's really quick. Second benefit, it allows them to download the file as well. So if you've uploaded your PowerPoint or your PDF, while the, the learners take your e-learning course, they can download that PowerPoint. They can also download the PDF. This allows them to sort of take it with them just in case they need it later. So that's the second option, embedding your entire document. It takes a matter of seconds. Next option is to add your content as images. Now this works both for PowerPoint and for PDF. Basically what you do, and I'll show you how to do it in PowerPoint, you just save your PowerPoint as an image. Same goes for PDF. You then have, in terms of PowerPoint, you've got an image of every single slide that's created for you. And then you'll add your slides as images. Now, the benefit here when you do this with PowerPoint is that every single image is a separate image. This allows you to add interactivity in between those pages. So you could add slide one and two, follow it up with a question, then add slides three, four, and five and then follow it up with two more questions. So it allows you to mix content and questions to provide an even more interactive experience. Now, of course, it does take a little bit more time than the previous option because you're adding those images one by one, but it's still relatively quick unless you've got lots and lots and lots of slides. But actually this option is great if you just want to pick and choose a few slides that you would like to add as well. And then we've got the last option, which is actually new. There is a new feature in Easy Generator that will be launched in September. 
So this is sort of a sneak peek. Basically, this is going to be a PowerPoint importer. I'm going to show you how it works as well. Basically, you import your PowerPoint and Easy Generator will create a draft of an e-learning. So it's going to pick and uh, uh, basically collect all of the text, tables, images, bullet points that you have inside your slides, and it's going to add them into pages within Easy Generator. So it's basically a bulk import of all your content from PowerPoint. Then, of course, you can make changes, you can make edits, you can remove some things, add some things, make it more interactive. So this option is great if you would like to use at least most or your entire PowerPoint and you'd like to import everything in one go. So those are the options. As you can tell, they're quite different and they have different benefits as well. So I'd now like to show you how all three of these options actually work. As I said, the first option is an option that is basically starting from scratch. And if you're interested in this, then please get in touch, send me an email and I can invite you to an onboarding session. Today, I'm going to focus on the quicker alternatives, really the quick ways to get this done. So we'll start with this first option, embedding your entire deck or PDF. How can you do this? I'm going to go over to Easy Generator. Hopefully you're able to see my Easy Generator screen right now. Um, I've created this e-learning course just for the purpose of today's session. You would not have to do it in this way, but basically what I've done is I've created three sections. In the first section, I'm going to show you the first option which is embedding your entire deck or PDF. Now, some of you may already know how to do this. For those who don't, first of all, it's important that you do have a content page. You can't add content if you don't have a page in there. So add a page, open it up, and then go over to the documents option. This is one documents option. You can add a Word file, a PDF, a PowerPoint, or an Excel file. It's up to you. In our case, I'm specifically speaking about PowerPoint and PDF. So those are the two examples I'm going to show you. Drag in the document and click here to change that document because currently, although it's still loading, it's a, a PDF of Easy Generator, which of course isn't the one that you want. You want your own PowerPoint in here. So click and select your PowerPoint. So I'm going to select it, it's right here, and I'm going to let it load. In the meantime, I'm just going to add my title. You'll see it takes a couple of seconds, but once it's complete, your PowerPoint deck will be inside your page. Just let it load. And this is what it will look like. So it's basically the browser version of PowerPoint and you will notice that every single slide just arrives in here. It's the same concept for PDF, except of course you're uploading your PDF instead. So you drag in the documents option and you go through the same steps, except you upload your PDF instead. So I've just got a PDF of my PowerPoint, uh, but of course you can imagine your own PDF in here. Once again, I'll let it load and my PDF has now been added. So I'll show you what this looks like by clicking on the preview. As you know, this preview button allows you to see exactly what it looks like from the end user perspective, from the learners. This is what it looks like if you add a PowerPoint. And this is what it looks like if you add a PDF. So as I mentioned, the two benefits of this is that, first of all, it's really quick. And secondly, they have the opportunity to download it. So if it's something you want to make accessible for them to keep, this is a great solution. Now, of course, if you just upload your PowerPoint or your PDF and that's it, you publish this e-learning, it's probably not going to have... Um, um, yeah, the impact that you're hoping it would have, because it's also important to add those elements of interactivity to ensure that you're providing that positive experience for them. So how can you do that? What does interactivity actually mean? 
Well, one of the quickest options to add interactivity is to add a learning objective. Now, learning objective is basically the goal of the section. So this is where you get to identify what's the goal? What do you want them to get out of looking at that PowerPoint or that PDF? So this is something you can either type out. And if you're struggling to come up with a learning objective, feel free to use the learning objective maker. What I'm going to do, I have one in my head, so I'm just going to type it out. My trainer will be able to, after going through this section, embed an entire slide deck or a PDF to create an interactive e-learning within 30 minutes, let's say. So it's a learning objective that's uh, clear and measurable. Now, how does this add to interactivity? I'm going to show you how. I'll just click on the preview to demonstrate. Basically, before they even reach your PowerPoint or your PDF, when they start the section, the very first thing they'll see is the learning objective. And that is why it adds to interactivity. Because before they even reach it, they know what's expected of them. They know what they're going to get out of it. And especially if this goal is, yeah, relatable for them or it's something they would like to achieve, they're going to be much more motivated to go through the PowerPoint deck or the PDF. So you're basically preparing them uh, to consume the content that will follow. So they'll now have this learning objective in mind when they go through your PowerPoint or your PDF or both. So that's a really quick way to add to the interactivity, add a learning objective. There's also another great way to add interactivity and that is to include questions. As you know, Easy Generator has 10 question types and this is the ideal way to add interactivity because you're um, asking them to answer a question. So they have to think based off of the PowerPoint or PDF, what's the answer to this question? It also allows for self-assessment, right? So once they've answered it, you know, they get to check, well, did I really understand or should I maybe go back and review? Now we have many question types, but for now I'll show you the multiple choice question as an example. When you add a question, you're basically just going to type it out. And then you're basically going to add your answer options. So I'm asking uh, which of the following options allows you to add content or questions in between. So I'm actually creating a question about today's topic. Um, so the options that allow you to add content or questions in between are the last two. When you embed your entire document, uh, the entire document is there. You cannot add anything in between, right? So I'm asking a question that they should be able to answer if they've gone through my PowerPoint or PDF. You can, by the way, then always add feedback. So you can add feedback that's specific for when they've answered the question correctly. You can add different feedback for when they haven't. So that way you're also giving them some acknowledgement and some guidance along the way. Now, what does this do to the experience? I'm going to go back to the preview to show you. Um, basically, once it loads, uh, once they start the section, they will first of all see that learning objective. So once again, they're going to be primed here on, you know, what's in it for them, what's the goal, and what should they focus on. But now, besides just this learning objective, they also see that they're going to have to answer a question. So this is also going to make them focus on that PowerPoint or that PDF more. So with these two things in mind, the learning objective and the fact that there is a question that will follow, they're going to go through your content more focused than they would otherwise have. So they'll go through it. And then once they've gone through it, they'll reach the question. Now at this stage, if they're not sure what the answer is, they'll go back. And that's really not a bad thing because it gives them the chance to self-assess and then if they need it, review the content once again. If you don't add any questions, you run the chances that they'll just go from slide one to eight, close the course. If you add questions and they're not sure what the correct answer is, the likelihood of them going back and reviewing the content is much greater. And that's a good thing because repetition ensures that they will remember it on the long term.
Now, once they actually answer the question, if they answer it incorrectly, they'll get feedback for an incorrect answer. So uh, here, you know, you can give some additional guidance that will put them onto the right path again. So they can try again, and this time they're going to hopefully answer it correctly. This improves the experience uh, by a lot. So that was the first option, embedding your entire deck or PDF. Let's move on to the next option, importing your content as images. Now I'd like to start with PowerPoint here. So I'm going to open up my PowerPoint that I used for the beginning of today's webinar. If you have PowerPoint content like this one, what you can do is save it as an image file. So you can select uh, JPEG, PNG, or, or GIF. All three options work fine. These are image formats. And when you click on one of these options and you click save, PowerPoint will ask you which slides you want to export. If you'd like to export all of them, click all slides. If you just want one or two, do this one by one per each slide. So you'll click, for example, just this one if this is the only slide that you would like to use. Now, I've already done this in advance. Basically, PowerPoint will create a folder and in that folder, you'll have as many images as you do slides. So it will basically have an image per slide. Now, what you'll then do is you'll add a content page and add the images of the slides. So select images, image, drag it in and select the image of your slide. So click on change image, upload. And here I'm going to go to my file, which has the image of all my slides. So I'm just going to select, for example, slide number three. Now you can always crop or, um, uh, so for example, you can just, uh, you know, crop or resize, reframe, it's up to you, zoom in, zoom out. So for example, what you could consider doing is removing the title and uh, maybe sometimes in your PowerPoint, you've got slide numbers or a logo. Um, yeah, you may want to, uh, um, want to remove those and then you can always add it here instead. Oops, there we go. Now what this looks like, obviously it looks very similar to your PowerPoint because it's an image of your PowerPoint slide and you would basically do this for each and every slide or only for the slides that you'd like to have in there, right? So this is actually a great option if you would just like to have you know, two or three out of 50 of your slides. You just want to pick and choose a few, and that way you don't need to embed your entire PowerPoint slide deck. You just pick and choose, add the images of those, and then continue, right? So uh, the process would just continue as follows. You add a new content page, select a new image, and continue in the same way that I've just shown you. So add an image, select the correct slide. So I perhaps select uh, this one here, and I would continue. Add a title, wait for it to load, and you do this for the pages that you want. Now, as I already said, the benefit of this one is that you can add interactivity in between. So um, basically, if you wanted to add a question in between these two slides, you could. So you could drag it in, and add it in between. Now, the benefit of having questions in between is that it can act as a bit of a checkpoint. It, um, uh, instead of going through all of the content and then having the questions, if it's content question, content question, they have the chance to have that checkpoint feeling. And if they have it incorrect, they know exactly where to go back to. It's easier for them to review content because they know exactly where to find it. Now with this option, you can also consider making use of uh, hotspots. Hotspots are an option that you can find under the uh, content types. Some of you may already know this. In the interactive options, there's an option here to add images with hotspots on top. So instead of adding your images only as regular images like I've done previously, you can actually add your slide of your image or your PDF as an image, 
um, and add extra information on top. So for instance, here I could add um, slide number three once again, and maybe I'll say hover over the image to find out more. And over the image, you can add extra information. So here I'm going to add more information about live trainings on Teams or Zoom. And maybe here I want to further explain what's the benefit of e-learning. And this could be maybe what you would typically explain in a live PowerPoint session. Right, except here you can't really do that. So uh, you can add hotspots on top of the image and I'll show you what it looks like. It's, just let it load, there we go. So basically when they hover over it, that information will pop up. So it's a nice way to combine an image with some text in an interactive way, which can of course also be great for images of screenshots or if you've got a slide that's has a lot of information on it or a slide with, you know, some important graphs or a table or a product, um, and you want to highlight just some specific pieces, you can use the hotspot for that. And it's more interactive than just adding the image. So that was the second option, importing your content as images. Oops, there we go. So that brings us to the last option here. Last option is to import your PowerPoint and edit it. Now this is an option that, as I said, will only be available in September. Once it is launched, you will receive uh, a message. So you'll receive a message from our team through this chat that this PowerPoint importer is now available. So um, um, I'll show you a sneak peek of what it will look like. Uh, I'm just going to open up my PowerPoint once again because I have an example. What this PowerPoint importer will do, it will allow you to import your PowerPoint as it is. And basically uh, the PowerPoint importer will transform your PowerPoint into an e-learning. So it's going to take all the text and images and tables and bullet points and create an e-learning course out of it. In that e-learning course, you will have as many pages as you do slides. So let me show you how it will work. Basically, as you're used to doing, you will click on new course. Once you've done that, you will find three options start from an empty course or build from scratch. Second one is use a template. These are both options that we currently have. The third and new option that will be made available is the PowerPoint importer. So as I said, you'll click on upload presentation. You'll select your PowerPoint, uh, which by the way, cannot be any greater than 100 slides. And once you've imported that PowerPoint, it's going to, the system is basically going to scan everything that's in there and transform it into an e-learning course. Now I'll show you how that works here. Once you've uploaded your presentation, you will notice that uh, the system will scan it. So it's going to take all the images, um, um, all the text, everything. And it's going to create a course out of it. Now, this course is going to be still a bit of a draft. So as you'll see, it will create one section and under that section, you'll have all of the pages. You will still need to make changes because maybe you want to uh, structure your content uh, into different sections. So you can still add different sections and move things around. You can drag pages up and down. And of course, you can add interactivity. This is what I've been speaking about earlier as well. So add a learning objective, add questions, add hotspots. These are features that are unique to Easy Generator that PowerPoint does not have. So these are elements that will never be transformed from PowerPoint to Easy Generator. These are things that you can add afterwards to make the experience more interactive than it was in PowerPoint, right? So you will still need to make those changes and um, make those edits. But the idea with this PowerPoint importer is that you can basically bulk import everything from your PowerPoint all in one go. 
just be careful. You, uh, uh, maybe your PowerPoint was really lengthy. So feel free to split it up. You can always remove some pages and add the rest of the PowerPoint in another e-learning course and have them as sort of two sub courses. Um, um, e-learning courses are typically best when they're not extremely lengthy. Uh, so that's uh, my recommendation there. If your PowerPoint is really lengthy, consider splitting it up. But with this PowerPoint importer, basically everything that you import, you can edit. So um, similar with adding your, your uh, slides as images, you know, you can add things in between, um, et cetera. Everything, by the way, will, will come in from PowerPoint. So if you've got a table in PowerPoint, it will come in. If you've got bullet points or listed lists, uh, they will come in as well. Images also. However, if you have videos inside your PowerPoint, they will not be transferred. You'll have to do that transfer uh, yourself. So if you do have important videos in there, just download them, or maybe you have them on your computer already and import them as you would typically a video on ET Generator. So you just add content, select the video option and drag your video in. So those, that actually concludes today's session. Those were the options that I wanted to um, uh, share with you. Um, so at this stage, I would just like to check in with uh, my colleague, Jordan. I know that I saw some questions uh, popping in. Jordan, are, is there anything that I should answer live? Uh, someone is asking if you will show a preview of the PowerPoint importer, I guess. It says, can Tessa show a preview of the outcome of her upload? Ah, uh, yeah. So I don't actually have that. That was a recording. Uh, because it's not in the tool yet, I unfortunately can't show you that, but it will look, actually this, it will look like um, a collection of images and, and, and text, right? So it's going to look the same as if you had created it yourself or if you had copied and pasted it in, uh, it's, it's going to have the same look and feel as that. Uh, there's also one more question um, from Peter asking about really large PowerPoints. So he has PowerPoints that are over 100 megabytes, and he would like to know how he how you would recommend um, importing those. Yeah, so there is that limit of, and Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong. So it's 100 100 MB, right? Yeah, 100 megabytes or 100 yeah. slides. Yeah. Um, so essentially, if you would want to import more or a file that's greater. Uh, I would just I would just advise splitting it up, uh, so you can just you know duplicate it and remove bits and pieces. You could do it sort of in half or in in, in thirds, and then add it uh, one by one. I would actually advise still keeping them separate um, because yeah, if it's if it's got more than a hundred slides or 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 even more uh, or just a really lengthy PowerPoint, then it's probably best to split it up anyway if it would be turning into an e-learning course. So that's my recommendation. Just splitting it up, the file will then become smaller. Great. And then there's a question about the optimal e-learning length. I think you might have touched on this, but yeah. Yeah, so optimal e-learning length, I would say an e-learning somewhere between 15 uh, and 20 minutes is a good size for an e-learning course. Um, it's, it, this is the size of an e-learning course where people are going to stay engaged, stay motivated, um, um, and also this will increase your completion rates. So it will ensure that more people will start, more people will finish, uh, but of course that doesn't mean that you can't you know, add more e-learnings down the line. So typically shorter e-learnings are more effective. All right, uh, we have like eight open questions. I'll just read them starting from oldest. Um, uh, we have a question. So um, if they have question slides in their PowerPoint, will they be imported as a question in Easy Generator or as just a content page? Yeah, so if you've got a question inside your PowerPoint, it will be imported as content. Uh, so you would be able to just copy and paste and turn it into a question. Uh, but if, yeah, in PowerPoint, you've probably just added it as text. So the PowerPoint importer will also see it as text. 
So questions you'll always have to create yourself inside EC Generator afterwards. Um, and then another question, what would be the visual differences between a PDF and a large PowerPoint that you upload? Um, not sure if I really understand. I imagine they, like, if you, I'm not sure if they mean if you export the PowerPoint as images and you export to PDF as images, uh, maybe that's what they, what they mean. Um, yeah, so if, if you are adding, you know, a PDF or a PowerPoint, it's going to have the look and feel of the PDF or the PowerPoint that you've, that you've created. So it's, it's same as with a screenshot. Uh, or yeah, with, it's, it's going to look exactly as your PowerPoint or PDF did. So that depends on what it looks like. If you are using the PowerPoint importer, however, um, it will look different because you'll have the text in the formatting. It, it will sort of it'll have the formatting from within Easy Generator. For example, if you've got backgrounds in your PowerPoint, those won't be added using the PowerPoint importer. It's really just going to take the text and the images. So with the PowerPoint importer, the look and feel differs, but if you're adding them as images, it will have exactly the look and feel as your initial file. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Um... Yeah, a lot of questions coming in. I'm just trying to do them oldest to newest. Uh, is the output a standalone file or does it run only on Easy Generator servers? So that depends. There are a few options to, uh, uh, to publish. So you can publish it through Easy Generator. In that case, yeah, it is. When you create an e-learning course, it, it will be on our server. Uh, but you can also, um, besides publishing it through a link where it remains on our server, you can also download your e-learning. and we. Uh, that download is, is through a SCORM download. And this is the, the file type typically used for publishing onto learning management systems. Mm. Um, and then another question, uh, I'm, um, when you're creating a new course, uh, do you also have the option to make a course from a PDF? Mm. No, so that option um, is not uh, available. So. Uh, when the PowerPoint importer will be available, there are only those three options. So starting from scratch, starting from a template, and starting from PowerPoint. Um, all right. And there's just uh, two more questions I think we have time for. One is, is it possible to integrate videos as a section for expl explanations? Mm, yeah, so you can add videos on any single page. Um, um, so you can just select an image from from your computer and add it to your to your page as an explanation for for something. I'm not sure if that answers the question. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, yeah, you can use videos as a mm -hmm. form of explanation. And then uh, one more question for, uh, is um, it's a good question. So in a PowerPoint where learners need to click on hyperlinks within the slides that then take them to another slide. So sort of a scenario type question or interactivity in PowerPoint, will those links carry over if the document is uploaded directly into EC Generator? Yeah, I, I actually don't know the answer to that one. Jordan, do you know the answer? I do not, that is a good question. <laughs> a good question, yeah. Um, so yeah, to, to whoever has asked that question or to whoever is, is, is wondering about this, um, my recommendation for you to get your answer, because uh, we may not be able to reach uh, out to you personally, uh, when you're in Easy Generator, just click on this green button and ask this question to our team here, uh, and they will be able to answer it. Um, um, our support team is, is answering questions like these more, uh, more often than Jordan and I, so they will definitely be able to answer this one. And this goes for the rest of you as well, for those of you who we weren't able to answer your questions, then please uh, uh, type them into here and our team will help you um, help you move forward. So that's a good question. I will uh, check in with the answer so that I can educate myself on that one as well. And uh, the person that answered that question, Rebecca has said, sorry, I didn't mean to stump you, so. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right, perfect. Then I think that's everything we've had time for, 45 minutes. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for joining the session. Thanks, Jordan, for answering uh, the questions coming in. Hopefully this was useful for you. Um, and of course, I hope 
that you look forward to the new uh, PowerPoint importer that will arrive in September. Once again, you'll be notified. Don't worry, you'll get a notification um, that it's uh, that it's been added. So you can try it out for yourself and uh, play around with that as well. Thanks everyone for joining and uh, have a good rest of your day.